what if the next visitor to our solar system isn't just a rock? Did you know that for every single interstellar object we identified just a decade ago, scientists now estimate thousands may pass through our system unseen every single year. Most are dismissed as comets, but I ask, what if we are missing something? Something strange is happening in the inner solar system. For months, astronomers have been tracking three, I divided by Atlas, that mysterious interstellar visitor that has been confounding scientists around the world. But just days ago, something extraordinary occurred. Three, I divided by Atlas, crossed the orbit of Mercury, the closest planet to the Sunday, and as it did, NASA's instruments began detecting fluctuations in light, in radiation, and even in the magnetic field surrounding our star. What happens next could change how we understand the boundaries between life, matter, and the universe itself. When 3i divided by Atlas was first discovered, it was just a faint smudge of light moving too fast, glowing too strangely. Astronomers, my colleagues, quickly realized this wasn't an ordinary comet or asteroid. It wasn't even born here. It came from beyond, from interstellar space, perhaps ejected from another star system millions of years ago. Its trajectory defied patterns, its brightness pulsed irregularly, and its surface reflected light in a way that no natural rock should. This last point is critical. In science, we rely on spectroscopy, the fingerprint of light. A natural rock or icy body has a predictable signature. Three, I divided by Atlas does not. Its albedo, or reflectivity, changes. This is an anomaly. And in my field, anomalies are where the discoveries lie. And uh, now, as it crosses Mercury's orbit, the object is doing something completely unprecedented. NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory detected a sudden spike in ultraviolet radiation directly in the region where three I divided by Atlas passed. This was not solar flare activity. The sun was quiet. Instead, it appeared as though the object itself emitted a brief pulse of energy, a kind of light signature, as if responding to the sun's proximity. For many scientists, this is baffling. No natural body should emit such a coherent directed light pattern. It's almost as if the object reacted to sunlight consciously or mechanically. The shape of the light emission resembled a short burst repeating at regular intervals similar to a coded signal. Some have even described it as a heartbeat. So what is going on here? NASA scientists from the Goddard Space Flight Center began analyzing data from multiple sources, the Parker Solar Probe, the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and the James Webb Space Telescope all showed the same thing. Uh, I must emphasize the consistency of the data across multiple independent instruments is what makes this compelling. We are not looking at sensor noise. When 3, I divided by Atlas, crossed Mercury's orbital path, its outer shell heated up far less than expected. Unlike ordinary comets that release gas and dust explosively when close to the Sun, 3, I, divided by Atlas, remained unnervingly stable. It did not disintegrate. It did not flare. It simply glowed. And then it dimmed deliberately, it seemed, as though it adjusted its brightness in response to observation. Now, that is not possible, right? At least not naturally. But what if 3 I divided by Atlas is not natural? What if it is something else, something we do not yet have words for? I myself have spoken about this regarding uh, Oumuamua, which showed similar anomalies, and I maintain the same caution and the same curiosity for 3 I divided by Atlas. We must keep our minds open I have said this in many interviews, objects from interstellar space could be messengers, technological or biological. Dismissing this possibility a priori before we have the data limits our ability to understand what is truly out there. Let us think about that for a moment. Imagine an object traveling through interstellar space for millions of years, absorbing radiation, starlight and cosmic particles until it drifts into our system and wakes up 
not because it is alive in the way we understand life, but because it is reactive, adaptive, maybe even self-aware on a level beyond biology. As it crosses Mercury's orbit, the sunlight striking it is nearly seven times stronger than what we experience on Earth. That kind of energy can melt metals, vaporize ice, and destroy fragile compounds. To put this in perspective, this is an environment exceeding 800 degrees Fahrenheit, yet 3i divided by Atlas is not breaking apart. It is enduring, and according to NASA's infrared data, parts of its surface actually cool down as the sun's radiation increases. This is impossible under normal physics. It violates the known laws of thermodynamics for a passive object. It is as if it is regulating its own temperature, like a living organism would, or perhaps like a sophisticated machine with an active cooling system. For decades, we in the mainstream have believed that interstellar objects are dead travelers, remnants of other systems wandering endlessly through space. But 3i divided by Atlas refuses to fit into that mold. Its behavior defies every model, every expectation, every law we thought we knew about celestial mechanics. And here is where the story takes an even more mysterious turn. The Parker Solar Probe, one of NASA's most advanced spacecraft, flying within the solar wind just beyond Mercury's orbit, uh, recorded electromagnetic disturbances coinciding precisely with 3i divided by Atlas's passage. These were not random noise patterns. They had rhythm, order, a repeating pulse, spaced exactly every 11 minutes and 42 seconds. When scientists converted those patterns into sound frequencies, the result was haunting. A deep resonant hum modulating faintly over time, almost like a voice lost in static. Uh, it was not a transmission in the traditional sense, but it carried coherence, structure. This is not Jupiter's radio noise. This is not the hum of the solar wind. This is structured data. NASA's data team called it the most complex signature ever recorded from a non-terrestrial object. Was it communication? We cannot say for sure. But for many in the scientific community, it raises one profound possibility. What if 3i divided by Atlas is not just passing through, but observing us in return? Think about it. The object has already crossed Mars's orbit, then Earth's, and now Mercury's. Each time it nears a planet, subtle anomalies occur, magnetic ripples, ionized trails, faint radio emissions. It is almost as if it is scanning, measuring, learning. Could it be mapping our solar system, preparing to leave behind a message before it departs forever? For all the generations who witnessed the birth of the space age, this moment carries an echo of nostalgia. The same awe that filled hearts when Apollo 11 landed on the moon, or when Voyager's golden record was sent into the cosmos carrying humanity's voice to the stars. But now it feels as if the tables have turned. We are no longer just the senders, we might be the receivers. Imagine if 3i divided by Atlas carries within it an ancient archive, data patterns, or even biological blueprints from another world. Perhaps it is part of an interstellar communication network designed not with metal and circuits, but with the language of energy, magnetism, and light. Some scientists suggest it could be a fragment of a larger object, a seed, a probe, or even debris from a civilization that perished long ago. If it is debris, it is the most sophisticated debris we have ever encountered. Yet, even in death, its technology or biology persists, driven by forces we are only beginning to comprehend. The deeper NASA looks, the stranger the data becomes. As the James Webb Space Telescope tracks its movements, a faint halo of gas has appeared around 3i divided by Atlas. This is not from sublimation, the boiling off of ice, which we see in comets. This is from ionized particles reacting to solar radiation. The halo pulses faintly, creating patterns almost identical to those seen in bioluminescent organisms in Earth's oceans. 
the resemblance is uncanny and unsettling. It makes one wonder, could life in its most extreme form exist even here, clinging to an interstellar object hurtling past the sun? If life has truly found a way to exist on 3i, divided by atlas, even in microbial or chemical form, then it means life is not a miracle limited to Earth. It is a universal law. The cosmos, it seems, does not ask for permission to create life. It just does again and again in infinite variations. NASA's latest data release hints that as 3i divided by Atlas moves away from the sun, it is leaving behind a faint trail, not of dust, but of tiny charged particles aligned magnetically like breadcrumbs of energy. Some researchers are calling it a solar echo, as if the object interacted with the sun's field in a way that recorded its own presence, almost like a signature left in light. And maybe that is exactly what it is. Maybe three I divided by Atlas is not here to visit. Maybe it is here to announce itself. That idea alone changes everything. For decades, scientists have debated the Fermi paradox. If intelligent life exists in the universe, why have we not heard from them? But what if they do not send radio signals or metal ships? What if they send objects, carriers of information designed to survive millions of years, coded in the chemistry of their structure, activated only when touched by the light of a new star? This is a far more efficient method of exploration, sending probes that outlast the civilizations that built them. That could mean that 3i divided by Atlas is not unique. It could be one of many, a messenger among thousands, drifting silently across the galaxy, waiting for intelligent life to notice. As it crosses uh, Mercury's orbit, one thing is certain. The data pouring in is rewriting textbooks in real time. Astrophysicists are now comparing its chemical signatures with those from meteorites found on Earth. Early indications suggest a strange similarity. Isotopic ratios of oxygen and carbon that do not match anything local to our solar system, yet echo traces found in pre-solar grains, those rare particles older than our own Sunday. If that connection holds true, it means Three, I divided by Atlas might be older than the solar system itself, a relic from a forgotten star carrying within it the memory of a world that once was, perhaps even the remnants of life that did not survive. And that brings us to the most haunting question of all. Is 3I divided by Atlas a survivor or is it a warning? If this object was ejected from a dying system, maybe it is carrying the story of that destruction the way Voyager carries ours. A time capsule drifting endlessly, whispering, we were here. Whatever happens next, NASA and the European Space Agency are preparing for the most critical observation phase yet. As 3, I divided by Atlas, completes its turn around the sun and begins its journey back into the outer solar system, telescopes will be watching, listening, measuring, every flicker, every pulse of light, because what it does next, whether it accelerates, disintegrates, or changes course, could reveal its true nature. If it speeds up, it might mean propulsion, an active system responding to solar energy. If it slows down, perhaps it is exhausted. And if it changes direction, well, that would rewrite the definition of impossible. For now, we can only watch and wonder. Because somewhere out there, beyond Mercury's orbit, an interstellar traveler continues its silent voyage. It may not have a voice, but it speaks in light, in rhythm, in mystery. And if we listen carefully, it might be telling us a story not just about itself, but about us. After all, we too are travelers, born from stardust, reaching into the unknown, asking the same ancient question, are we alone? Um, here is the lesson we must take from this. The universe is under no obligation to conform to our expectations. We must approach the cosmos not with the arrogance of knowing, but with the humility of a child ready to be surprised. 
we must be willing to entertain extraordinary possibilities because the data, the fluctuations, the impossible cooling, the structured signals is demanding it. We must not allow conservatism to blind us to what may be the most important discovery in human history. The evidence is before us. So I ask you, what do you think three I divided by Atlas really is? A dead rock, a relic of a lost biology, or a message written in light? Let me know your hypothesis in the comments below. And if you believe, as I do, that we must follow the data wherever it leads, however strange, then subscribe to this channel as we continue this journey together.